Hi, I'm Dr. Tom Schell with Nouvel Research and the Curos EQ line of formulas for the horse and also with SecondBet.com Equine Consulting. Um, wanted to introduce our new Curos Q&A sessions. We're hoping to put together a weekly video looking at some common questions to lend a little bit of advice, a little bit of guidance from our point of view um, as to how to maybe best to manage and approach these cases. Um, so I hope that uh, these will be valuable and helpful to you. Um, we're going to start today's session off with a very common question regarding hock arthritis in the horse and the use of herbs. So let's dive into it. But I will tell you, I'm going to be using uh, PowerPoint presentations with these. Uh, very, very short, but it's the easiest means for me to relay information regarding x-rays and videos and certain information. So bear with me. Let's get into it. Okay, so today's discussion, we're looking at equine hock arthritis. Um, the question again is... I can get it to pull up. Will the use of herbs to manage inflammation impact joint fusion in the horse's hock during cases of arthritis? Will the herbs help or hurt the situation? So what does all that mean? Well, let's dive into it here. So we have got, I'm going to get me a marker here, uh, red. We've got uh, two x-rays. Um, this is on the left over here. This is our lateral view. So this is our lateral view. This is our AP view over here, front to back on the right, lateral or side view here on the right. Um, in the horse's joint or the hock, we have got four joints. We have got a tibial tarsal joint here, proximal intertarsal joint, distal intertarsal joint, and tarsal metatarsal joint. So over here on the front to back view, we've got uh, tibial tarsal, proximal intertarsal, distal intertarsal, and tarsal metatarsal joint. So I'm going to switch colors here and uh, show you a couple things. And uh, we're going to switch over to blue. So when we're looking at these x-rays, ideally what we're looking for is this, this black line. So I'm going to go over this, this black line here, black line here, black line here. You know, and you can even see you know, part of the black line up here at this joint and here as well. So those, those are our joints. Now I'm going to remove those if I can. So we can discuss a little bit further. Boom, 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 boom. All right, so go back to my pen. So again, we're looking for those black lines. And now that black line indicates that the joint is present. Now the black line is not actually a space, uh, but it's actually where the cartilage lies. So the cartilage is in that black line. Cartilage is not as dense as bone, so when we take an x-ray, the radiograph beam penetrates through the cartilage. It shows up as black on the x-ray. So what we're looking for is nice, clean black lines. They're consistent. They're dark, they're, they're black, and they're consistent throughout that area or through that joint. And that tells us that the joint is open. Cartilage is probably in pretty good shape, um, and everything looks pretty good. So over here on the uh, AP view, um, again, we have got a nice black line here with the uh, tibiotarsal joint proximal intertarsal joint, distal intertarsal joint, and then the uh, tibiotarsal joint. So with that being said, again, we're looking for the nice clean black lines, um, nice square bones, etc. So we're going to move into an x-ray now looking at a horse with arthritis, if I can get it to pull up. There we go. So in this case here, we've got a horse uh, with uh, degenerative joint disease of the lower joints. And that is very commonly where we will find it in a horse with hock joint disease. It's the lower two joints. So the distal intertarsal and the tarsal metatarsal joint. These are very low motion joints, uh, meaning there's very little movement in these joints as the horse flexes and extends and uses the leg. Um, they're very, very susceptible to arthritis, wear and tear, increased stress. The bones tend to slide across each other. Friction creates inflammation, and inflammation then leads to degenerative joint disease um, and remodeling. So as we look at this, uh, basically what we're looking for, again, is the black line. So you can see the black line right here, but then it goes back through here, and it just gets all fuzzy. Black line here, and then it just gets all fuzzy. We just kind of lose it. So I'm going to remove those marks if I can so you can see um, again. But you can see how the black line is gone uh, back towards the back part of the joint. Um, and it's basically all remodeling. Um, if we look towards the front, we've got, you know, areas right through here. Uh, get my pen back. Right up through here, you know, and here. This is all bone loss and remodeling all throughout here. It's bone loss and remodeling. We've got a small bone spur that's forming here. Um, bone spur that's forming here. 
And we would even be inclined to say that there's a small bone spur that is forming here um, at the proximal intertarsal joint. And if we look at the fluidity or the uh, um, anatomy here of that joint, this, this black line is actually kind of grayish. It's kind of hazed out, if you will. It's kind of fuzzy. And that indicates that probably we've got some cartilage loss and some remodeling going on here in the proximal intertarsal joint as well. So the question comes is, is will herbs help or hurt this situation? Well, in, in a lot of cases, when we look at lower hock disease in the horse, the reason they're experiencing discomfort is, is because these joints are remodeling, they're breaking down, they're degenerating, and there's still movement in these joints. So when there's movement in a degenerative situation, there's going to be pain and discomfort. So ideally, considering these two lower joints are very low motion joints, um, ideally, what we would like to see in a case such as this here on this x-ray would be total fusion of these joints, which would mean essentially it'd be like taking one brick here and laying it on top of another brick and putting mortar between the two and just fusing them together so that there is no joint, there is no motion. If we were to eliminate motion in the joints, we would eliminate uh, discomfort and pain in an ideal world. Now, if we were to leave this joint alone and do nothing to it, would it fuse on its own? And the answer to that is, is no, it will not. And the reason that is, is because this joint is constantly moving. Even though it's in a state of degeneration, this joint is still constantly moving. So if we were to have a bone, if you were to, you know, break up, if you were to have a bone like so, and break that bone here, in order to get this segment here to fuse to this segment and have that fracture heal, you need to um, immobilize it. It needs to be basically in a state to where there is no movement so that these cells can cross and fuse and, 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 and form a nice calcium bridge and new bone formation. So in a case like this over here, um, the body's trying to do that. It's trying to fuse or stabilize an unstable situation, but given the horse is moving every step, every move they take, these joints are moving to some degree, Every effort that the body is doing to try to lay down new calcium to bridge this and fuse it is being broken down with every step the horse is taking. So the body's laying down a new bridge across here, but then the horse over time keeps moving, breaks the bridge down. The horse then lays down new bridge, and it just keeps this just, just repetitive cycle, repetitive cycle. So it never really ends given that the horse is constantly moving. So thus, a lot of these horses are in basically different varying degrees of discomfort and pain. So with that being said, how could we fuse this joint completely? Um, when we look at it, you know, if we were to look at the bone, you know, from top to bottom, let's just pretend it's like a saucer. Uh, when we look at an x-ray, we're only seeing bits and pieces of these joints, um, no matter how many views we take. So on an x-ray, we may look like we have some fusion over here and maybe a little bit of fusion or arthritis here and maybe here, but we've got this huge central area all throughout here that there is no fusion and chances are it's because there's still cartilage present in that area. And as long as cartilage is present in that area, fusion's not going to take place. So how can we speed this process up? And also keeping in mind that these joints are constantly moving. Well, two things. Number one is, is that back in the days, we would inject these joints about every two weeks. So we would take a needle and inject the, the upper and the lower joint, you know, with some sort of corticosteroid. Um, and that would hasten this fusion process. Corticosteroids long-term, especially in high doses, uh, will inhibit cartilage regeneration, and they will actually lead to cartilage loss, which is part of the problem behind constantly injecting a horse's joint, um, in my opinion. So we would inject these joints every two weeks. Would that solve the problem? Yeah, not really. Um, it would help, but it wouldn't resolve it. And the reason being is, is no matter how many times we inject this joint, it's still moving. So if we really wanted to get as much fusion as we could, we would inject the joints, but then we would put a cast on the horse to stop movement in this joint. That's ideal. Um, back in college, they also taught us a technique called uh, joint drilling to where we would surgically come in with a drill bit and drill across the joint um, in several places. And what that drill bit would do is then essentially eat up uh, the cartilage that's present, which would then over time lead to degeneration and fusion uh, at a much higher degree than what we could achieve through natural means or joint injection. However, not only is it costly and risky, but again, even though if you were to do a joint uh, uh, drilling technique, 
you still have to immobilize the joint with a cast. Um, going back to this fracture process, and it has to be immobilized in order for that to fuse. Um, if there's movement there, the body's going to continue to try to fuse it, fuse it, fuse it, fuse it. It just keeps broken down, breaking down, breaking down, breaking down. And so it's just this repetitive cycle. So to get this joint to completely fuse, you would have to do something like joint injections repetitively along with a cast, which is very um, time consuming. It's costly and it's a pain with a horse with a cast. Same thing with um, um, joint drilling. Same, same thing, except you're looking at a much higher cost over there. So ultimately, the question comes is, is, will herbs help or hurt this situation? Well, considering that this is an inflammatory response that's going on, herbs, when used properly, can help to control this inflammatory response. Are they going to speed the fusion process? No, they won't. Will they stop the fusion process? Yeah, maybe to a degree. They're mainly going to help manage it and control it. They're going to keep it from getting out of hand. Because the more the body tries to keep laying calcium down and bridging and bridging and bridging and the horse keeps breaking it down, the angrier it gets, the more inflammation that takes place. So a lot of these joints over the long term can just look nasty on x-ray because the body is just repetitively trying to bridge this thing and it's getting angrier and angrier. So proper use of herbs can help us to manage that inflammatory process, help to keep these bones and the cartilage as healthy as possible and that can help to control the pain and discomfort in these horses. So hopefully that uh, uh, makes some sense. So conclusions, hot osteoarthritis in the horse is associated directly with inflammation and can be controlled if not improved over a long period of time using herbs and other alternative modalities. Hock arthritis in the horse is generally connected with conformational flaws in the horse, including straight conformation in the hocks and stifles. Very, very common. Hock osteoarthritis in the horse is also associated with stressful activities upon the hock, including events like reining, barrel racing, other disciplines, which stress that joint beyond intended levels, which then creates inflammatory events. Many arthritic conditions in the horse are also associated with pathologies such as dampness, which is an alternative term, and we have articles on this, which implies digestive weakness toxin accumulation within the body and subsequent blockage of energy channels, which impairs normal energy circulation and also contributes heavily to inflammation. Herbs, when properly used, can dramatically impact the progression rate, rate of deterioration, and severity of the condition in the horse. Recommended herbal formulas for consideration. EQ Pure and EQ Inflamend are high up on my list because most of these cases are fairly well advanced. Very, very high concentrations of these anti-inflammatory herbs in those formulas and very, very effective. Um, the dose can vary between one horse to the next. Um, total support is used in our easier keepers with mild degeneration of those joints. Um, generally does a pretty nice job. If we've got an easier keeper or, or heavier bodied horse, bigger boned, uh, that has gotten more damage to the joint, more pain, more discomfort, we'll go with the toddy, total body and joint. Reason being is, is that it provides us with digestive support for that dampness component and has the same level of anti-inflammatories as what this EQ Pure is. So we get a double whammy type of effect with this total body and joint. Very, very good formula. Bone repair is a really nice formula that can dramatically impact cartilage and bone health. It takes some time. This is not something we're going to use to control pain and discomfort right off the top, but we're going to use it generally for the beginning because long term it's looking at helping to repair those, those two entities. Trigut itself targets the digestive component, the dampness component, the toxin component. So we'll often run the Trigut in combination with something like the Pure, the Inflamed, or the Total Support. Total body and joint has got this in it. Um, so that's where we get the double whammy effect with that uh, particular blend. So questions, contact us at curios.com with your general inquiries, um, or you can reach out to us on our Facebook uh, page, submit your question there, and maybe we'll make a video answering your questions for you. Um, if you need more personalized information uh, regarding your horse, looking for detailed um, advice, guidance, um, contact me at secondvet.com.